Every once in a while we like to have a talk, just a conversation. Not a whole lot of shooting, not a lot of action, but just to talk about what's going on in reference to gun control. What are the gun control advocates, what are the anti-gun politicians, what are the anti-gun hate group zealots doing today that is villainizing you and I, the people that follow the laws, the law-abiding gun owners, the fact people that actually care what the law is so we can continue to navigate them and follow them and not be a criminal. And boy, have I got a good one today. Today I want to discuss plastic guns. So the first thing you typically want to ask yourself when you turn on the news one morning and, and you're hearing information about something that typically you know more about than the average cat, but somebody's spouting things that don't make sense, that you've never heard, that you know not to be true, First thing you want to ask yourself is, what is the new crisis? What is this new emergency that we must address so fast that it has to be treated like Pandora's box is just cracking open and we have to grab this, this new technology or this new danger that's about ready to fly out before it escapes and, and it can never be caught or captured again. This time, it's plastic guns. Plastic guns, that's all we're hearing. Plastic guns. 3D plastic guns, and because they always have to add an adjective to whatever it is that they're trying to, to pervert the definition of, plastic undetectable guns is what you'll hear more often than not. Undetectable plastic guns. What are those? It could be the dawn of a new era in gun manufacturing. Starting as soon as Wednesday, people will be able to use 3D printers to make their own weapons and weapon parts. No background check required. Well, if you're somebody with an education in firearms, maybe a little bit above the rest, and you're asking yourself that question, what are these plastic, undetectable uh, guns, then maybe they don't exist at all. Just like reality is going to show us again in this case. Undetectable plastic guns. It's a brand new buzzword. This, this, well, it's a recycled buzzword, but they're treating it as though it's brand new. Back in the 1980s, 1987 I believe, Senator Howard Metzenbaum ran this issue to the top of the flagpole as though it, at that time, in, in the 1980s, Pandora's box was going to crack again and he was at the forefront and had to stop it with the Glock. The Glock pistol was fairly new to the U.S. market and, and immediately they needed a new, a new bad guy, something new to villainize, and, uh, and the Glock happened to be it. So it was touted in the anti-gun circles as a plastic handgun that was undetectable to airport security. We all know that that's not true and it's not even possible. As a matter of fact, the Glock has over a pound of steel in it. Uh, but we don't want to let facts get in the way of a, of a really good story or a scare, now do we? What's brought this new issue to light, or what's brought this old issue to light again, is the availability of, of what are called 3D printers. Oh my goodness, somebody could just make a firearm all on their own without a special registration, a special permission, or, or a special record of it, or without a background check. Well, guess what? Since the inception of firearms, and since the inception of the United States, People have always been able to make a firearm on their own without jumping through all kinds of ridiculous hoops. And you know why the first time you're possibly hearing about it is just now? Because it isn't a problem. There isn't a problem that exists. It's not a problem whatsoever. So there is no new crack in, in what would be Pandora's box. There isn't even a box that exists. We've got something that's happening today just like it's happened for hundreds of years and, and it's not a new issue. No matter how many times they scream about it or how loud or what they put for photos on the screen, it's not new, there isn't a problem, and there isn't anything that needs to be fixed. Even the 3D printers that seem fairly new to the market, to the, to the retail or the, or the consumer market, aren't new. I've been using 3D printers for over 20 years, over two decades, except we didn't call them 3D printers, we have called them rapid prototype machines, and we use them to make exactly that, prototypes, before we start cutting steel to make sure that ideas we have here can translate here without having to spend all kinds of money making tooling to make steel things that may or may not work. So it's just a prototype machine. So if the ability to make a firearm personally isn't new, if making things, in this case prototypes, because regardless of what we see or hear, a firearm that's made entirely of plastic may fire once, I don't know, maybe if it's really nice plastic, it may fire twice. Um, but, but they're not made to be used over and over like a regular firearm. This is more in the 
beginning infantile stages than anything else, making things that are actually plastic. When, when the legislation happened in the 1980s, uh, our, our legislators at the time thought we were on new, some, some new cutting edge of having the ability to make things out of plastic. And, and plastic undetectable handguns in reality, in their actuality, were made illegal. So over 30 years ago, plastic undetectable handguns were made illegal and that's where everything stays today. So we don't need to do anything new today as we move forward. We did something 30 years ago that regulates something that still doesn't exist here 30 years later. That's how they do things in Washington. As far as using plastics and polymers in the firearms industry or really any industry, that's an absolute. We have been using plastic and polymers to make parts of firearms for a very long time now. And just because pieces and parts of something are made from plastics and polymers, metals are still used as part of the manufacturing process. There has been ammunition made from plastics and polymers that also needs metal for a very long time. Receivers of some of the more popular sporting guns today are made from plastics and polymers. Again, they, all, they also need metal. Magazines uh, use plastics and polymers, also need metal. So there is no crisis, there is nothing new, there is no cutting edge technology that's on the cusp of being entered into society that needs to be stopped. Just like with every single one of these gun control debates, there is nothing new at all. We don't get to have these quick little chats very often, uh, but I'm always happy when we do. If you enjoy them or you find them helpful, uh, please click like. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel, both on YouTube and on Full30. Make sure that you ask to be notified by clicking the bell or opting into a list. You can visit us over on Patreon if you want to be part of the behind-the-scenes stuff that we do. Uh, that, that We have a little bit more fun on for, for our patron friends. And uh, if you like to communicate or be involved on a regular basis, Facebook is probably the best place because we participate almost every single day at facebook.com slash guntestbids. Until next time, have fun and be safe.